Hello everyone, it's Lily, and today I will be continuing with my Shuen no Virushu Otome Diaries. Um, yeah, so I will be talking about Adolf today, which was the longest route ever. <laughs> so I will be splitting into part, part one and part two because I don't think I can remember everything in both parts because, oh my, honestly, it was the longest route ever. I think it took me about 16 hours to complete. Every time I thought it would end, there was another twist and then it wouldn't end. And, and yeah, don't get me wrong, it was still good. I'm just saying it did take a long, long time. But anyway, before I start, remember this is a spoiler video. I will be talking literally about everything or most of what happened during the route. And so if you're planning on playing it and don't want any spoilers, I would swiftly move on. But anyway, let me start. So, <laughs> this whole time I thought Anko wasn't a love interest. And he's, he's not really, to be honest, like not really. But he is, and um, I'll probably explain that more on part two. But so you kind of get to semi-romance both of them, in a way. And uh, so the story starts with there, of course, being an uprising because of the mass murder that happened that everyone thinks Celeste caused. So Adolf basically um, decides to take Celeste into his own home and look after her and like kind of protect her in a way as he always has done throughout his life and um that continues happening so you get to see the daily life between adolf and celeste and there is one cg which is really sweet she basically has a nightmare that adolf has died um and goes rushing to him and hugs him and then i guess he kind of sees her as not a sister but a bit more so there's this moment where it's a bit like I don't know a bit awkward shall we say and also can I just say that this whole route actually starts um with Adolf coming across Celeste killing herself and this is quite interesting because in part one and part two where the ones where you play the common route prior to the character other character routes Celis tries to kill herself, but doesn't succeed. Whereas in this last route, you see her right at the beginning actually successfully killing herself and Adolf rushing towards her and hugging her with like tears um, going down his face. And it kind of is like the intro to it. And I think, yeah, she sees this as a dream. Um, but it's all, it, I thought that was interesting because throughout the route, you end up kind of wondering why that was, like what that was all about. But anyway, so yeah, they live together. However, one day, Adolf forgets his microphone and Celeste decides to run after him to deliver it to him, except she instead comes across Adolf and Hugo talking about real live technology. And um, she overhears that Adolf isn't sure about whether he's going to use it. He's thinking about dying at the age of 23 without using it. Because Celeste was well, she had this idea that Adolf would be near her every single day for the rest of at least her life. She was a little bit shocked to hear this and it almost felt a bit betrayed. And um, so she runs off and uh, Adolf notices this and runs after her and all of this happens. And uh, yeah, this is when she also encounters Anko. And um, I guess this is where you start to get to know Anko a little bit because I guess because she's so sad, she decides that she's going to accept the contract that Anko suggested right at the beginning of the game of her helping him look for the culprit of this mass murder and finding out why Al Pesero has this kind of poisonous problem almost. Um, you know, the curse that causes people to die and so she accepts it because I guess she's feeling quite sad about um, Adolf so she's like, yes Anko, I accept your contract, let's work together. Adolf of course encounters this and is like, wait, who the hell is this guy? He's so suspicious, why are you accepting his uh, contract? Because, but Celis is like, well, I want to find out myself why this country is cursed. And not to mention, I also want to become a normal girl, which is Angor's side of the deal, where he said, you know, if you help me, I will turn you into a normal girl that's not gonna cause everyone to die. 
And considering she seems to only be able to be around Adolf without Adolf dying, she's like, no, I want to be like that with everyone. And so that sort of agreement gets made and Adolf is against it, but he's, it, Cyrus has made his mind. So it is what it is. And um, it's, it's so, it's kind of cute. I'm not gonna lie because Adolf and Uncle bicker all the time. I guess they both like Celeste and um, yeah, it's, and <laughs> it is cute because I do love it when you see two guys always fighting against the um, each other for the MC. I think it's very heartwarming and I'm like, oh, that's cute. And um, Uncle shows a very childlike personality. So what happens is they all end up living together in Adolf's um, house and you see Adolf and Uncle um, bickering all the time over silly things and it's they both have the childish sides and one thing that made me laugh the most and made me go the most <laughs> was when Adolf's like hey Uncle how dare you draw a doodle in my diary <laughs> I can just imagine the thought of like Uncle like drawing a silly character or something in Adolf's diary just cracked me up but anyway, now they decide to sneak into the royalty's library because they think that that's where they will find, you know, information as to why the country became the way it did and all of this. So Dahato helps them sneak in because he's like, well, I'm gonna have to go and see the royalty on this day so I can pretend that you're my assistant and then you can sort of secretly sneak away and then you know uh, find your way through the library and so they, they go by this plan and they come into this library they struggle to find anything but for some reason this magical door kind of opens and they actually find an underground um, pathway into like an underground library and there they come across the diary of the previous queen who's doing her best to find out also why the country became the way it is. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all very interesting because you kind of read it and you're like, oh, who's this queen? You, you know, you haven't heard of her until this final route. And uh, it seems that the other royalty don't care so much about the curse. They care more about lengthening their lifespan. Whereas this queen was very much focused on trying to figure out the source of why this country became the way it did. And um, it was odd because it was almost like the royalty did not support this. And uh, yeah, and you also find out that she gave birth to her son. And um, I think towards the end she gets betrayed by royalty and lives on as a normal person that's not a royalty with a different face and whatnot. And all that's written at the end of this diary is I can't believe my son has died, I hate the royalty, all of this, and how she's going to continue looking for the reason as to why the country's become the way it is, uh, just as not a queen, but as a reliver you know, a different human being looking thing every single time. And so, you know, it's interesting because you can tell that knowing about this queen is fairly key. Now anyway, they didn't find anything else other than that, so I guess that's where it all ends in terms of the research, and then they go back to Adolf and Anko's uh, place. Well, I say Adolf and Anko, Adolf's place. <laughs> now, this is where a problem occurs. Someone, for some reason, finds out that the reason why Sedesu is kind of the way she is with the curse of people dying around her and they discover that it is because she's a little bit like the Dikoris flower where she absorbs all the poison and then releases it causing people around her to die and they discover this and the royalty announced to the people saying that we need to find Sedesu who we shall you know give as a maiden of sacrifice she will be a saint like person so please find her because she will be the um, solution to all of our problems. It will help the Adobesheru, you know, um, stop being this cursed, scary place. Everyone will live longer than 23 years. So please find her and capture her. And this whole uprising happens where all the townspeople, everyone in the country is looking for her, running after her, trying to find her. So they retreat into where Uncle used to live, which is like this cave-like place. 
Now, of course, they can't live there forever. Um, Eve helps them out by bringing them food. Same goes for Hugo, same goes for Mattis. Like, they all help them out. But, of course, they get captured or killed. Um, Luca being the mass murderer, I think he ends up killing uh, someone. He also ends up killing Eve. Um, or it looks like he's killed Eve. And uh, in the end, Sedister and Adolf both get captured and brought into the research facility slash castle. Now, <laughs> oh boy. So, Adolf, you discover, was actually a normal human. So, instead of dying at the age 23, he was the second outsider and what's happened is he has been sort of washed up ashore onto Arbesheru and realises what's going on and I guess ends up becoming the second outsider. And he ends up telling uh, Ceres this um, because, you know, he wanted to tell her sooner or later and uh, all that happens. And also, this is when Ceres tells Adolf of the plan because what's happened before this is that she finds out that next to her cell was Dahato's cell. Dahato was also caught and imprisoned because he was against the royalties. Wishes of, you know, capturing Selesu and turning her into like this thing that's gonna save Adabesheru. He felt like that was wrong. He felt like, let's make relivers that have like the heart while continuing to find the source and like, you know, a way to fix it without having to basically sacrifice Selesu. And um, so the royalty didn't like that, so he got imprisoned as well. And this is when Selesu and Dahato have a conversation and um, uh, this is another route where if you pick one answer, you end up dying. <laughs> but if you pick the correct answer, what happens is they have a conversation. Dahato explains to her that what's likely to happen is that the royalty will probably um, take her and want to show her off to the public to show their power almost. Look, we've got this, we can help you, that sort of thing. So um, he was like, that's your chance. When that happens, you will you know, have that brief moment of time where you can find where Adolf is, you can find where Anko is and save them and run away. And you know, it's this scene's actually quite sad because he says, I probably am not going to survive, but what will happen is the royalty will probably execute me and then to show to you and make you feel despair, they will probably show you or throw at you a part of my body is what he says to her. And of course, that's what happens. What happens is he gets taken away. He experiences this horrific, messed up, oh, I, I don't even, oh, it really is, it's really bad. What the royalty does to Dahato is they pin him to a wall and shot arrows, not exactly where his heart is, but close to his heart, a little bit to the side, um, where it won't instantly kill him, but he would have to go through the pain of being shot multiple times over and over again, and he eventually dies, but that's the way he's executed. And um, yeah, and of course, royalty, one of the guards, brings uh, Celis a bit of his hair. And what the plan is, is that she's going to use this bit of hair to get into Adolf and Ankor's room, which is locked, but because the lock's been made so that if you put the DNA of someone there that's, you know, given access, it will open up. Um, so she brings Dahato's hair and of course the royalty decide that let's bring Selesu in front of everyone to show off and all of this exactly as Dahato had explained what is likely to happen. Thank God. Um, so yeah, she explains this to Adolf when all the experiments have been done on him and he's uh, put in the same cell as him because yeah, obviously after Celes goes in front of the public, she's gonna die. So I guess like the not noble people and the royalty were like, oh, you know, this is us being nice to you. You guys can hang out together before you get sacrificed. I mean, <laughs> everything is so harsh about this game. Um, but yeah, so that happens. And that's when Adolf tells her that, you know, he's actually a normal human and he's going to live past 23 and that's why he isn't going to do what wasn't planning on anyway, doing the reliver technology. And uh, yeah, it was horrible because before Adolf came to this cell, he had gone through all sorts of excruciating experiments because um, this is when Kapshino, the guy that 
was, you know, messed up in Yuka's route, you'd discover that this head person um, that exists, there's like some head boss person that has been telling Capuchino and actually um, Jiang from uh, Mattis's route, um, you know, to do these experiments. He's basically given them these ideas and has been sort of manipulating them into doing the stuff which he wants the information of. So there's always been this boss guy you discover um, throughout all the routes, which is really interesting. And um, yeah, so obviously Capuchino also gets put into place where Xiang used to be because Xiang's also killed, of course, because everyone dies at the beginning. <laughs> Honestly, when I went through that, I was like, okay, I'm, sh I'm sure they'll be fine. Oh, Xiang and Mattis died, okay. Oh, oh, Eve died as well okay and then it's like i wonder what's gonna happen to ryuka i bet he's gonna die as well and then of course the hato dies which i didn't expect so everyone's dying and i'm like oh, what is this? i don't even <laughs> i'm laughing it's not that i find it funny it's just more it was such a shock like i knew it'd be horrible but i didn't think so many people would die so quickly in the route and uh anyway so you discover this that Adolf has been going through excruciating experiments because he suggested to Cappuccino that he's going to be um, experimented upon as opposed to Seresu. And uh, yeah, that's how they kind of discover that Adolf is actually an outsider. And then, yeah, it's, it's, it's all a bit crazy, really, because then he becomes even more of a great experimental sample, shall we say, because they don't know of anyone else that is actually an outsider. And of course, they do experiments on Anko as well. Now, when the escape plan happens, it all doesn't really actually go to plan, because what happens is someone, the boss person, announces that he is actually the son of this former Cree queen that actually survived, like the road he thought he was dead, but you find out that he's actually alive. And um, it's, it's kind of like crazy because then he says, I'm gonna fix this uh, country and I'm also going to kill everyone in it because I absolutely hate the mentality everyone has in this country, which is, oh, it's fine if I die because I can just become Reliver. And he really detests, just like his mother did, on how people are taking life so lightly. They're not thinking that, you know, you only live once, all of that stuff. They're like, oh, I can, I can just turn into Reliver, um, you know body and I guess they don't like that they really are against it in that they feel like you shouldn't take life that um lightly you should live to the best ability with that one life and unfortunately it's 23 years but you should still live it to the best ability and um so he says he wants to put everyone in this country every person all the population because he doesn't like this attitude and you're like oh my god there's this uprising and craziness which obviously said and that didn't expect so what happens is said immediately rushes using this opportunity rushes to um uncle where uncle is stored stored i say this because oh god so he's in xian's room and uh, which obviously she gets in using Dahato's hair. And the reason why I say stored is because Anko is stored in a jar with just his head. None of the other body parts, just his head. And it's because he is immortal. Um, he can just grow back to his normal self again. I guess it was easier to store him as a head anyway. She grabs him and then she goes to the dungeon, um, gets Adolf out and they all rush to, I guess, the underground thing, the sewage systems that constantly, constantly appear in uh, this game in every single route. And again, this is to the sewer system that looks eerie. And then they come across this research room by chance and... Um, that's when they discover that this boss person, the culprit behind all of this, was actually Dahato. And yeah, so you're like, oh my gosh, I guess it sort of makes sense because in all of the other routes, you know, Dahato constantly appears. He's a nice guy, he's cool, he's chilled, he's a sub-character that you gradually feel very warm towards and then you discover that he's behind all of these horrible uh, terrible experiments that have been happening all along but you know what i can't hate the hado 
he, I just can't. He was a great, um, he was a great evil guy, um, and uh, yeah, I, I just, I just thought it was great how they revealed that it was Dato. Now in this route, I kind of figured, I don't know whether they did it on purpose, but there is one scene when the, um, because the culprit, you hear him like, well, her is you don't know at this point talk and um part of me was thinking it's either mum or dahato but then i was very sure it was dahato because i don't know whether they did this on purpose but the way the sound was made although they make the sound sound like you know so that you can't tell who it is the rhythm and the tone in which those words were spoken to me sounded a bit like how dahato's voice actor speaks so to me when i picked up on that I was like okay so it must be Dahato so when I came across him and found out that he was the culprit all along it was obviously like a, a surprise but also at the same time I was like okay so my theories are confirmed and it did kind of make me happy <laughs> so yeah it was it, it was fun but so I'm gonna leave it there you get to, you know, think about Dahato being the uh, culprit this whole time and, you know, you, you, can, you can ponder that in your mind and uh, I know it's kind of mean that I'm ending it here but I will continue part two next week maybe or the week after that depending on my schedule. As always, thank you very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and hopefully I'll see you in another one of my uh, Otome Diaries video. Bye!